In this video, we're going to learn how to qualify for a second round of a PPP loan. It's being referred to as actually that PPP2. In doing this, the situation we're in in this country, this is actually good news. This is trying to help keep small business alive. And I, I'm going to refer here to this little sheet of paper here. This is new law. And it's, it's out of the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021, and it's called the CAA. And I, I, I want to highlight this, whatever, but this is important because if you're actually doing private searches on Google or whatever, this is what you're looking for. And a sub part of that is the economic aid and hardships, hard hit small businesses, non-for-profits and venture act. It was signed into law just a couple of days ago, uh, on December 27th. Actually, the law is divided into two parts. Now, most of us that may be watching this has already applied for a PPP loan. Can I get a second one? Yes. If I haven't applied for one, plus we're going to find out today they've expanded the definition of qualified business. And as a result, we may be applying for it the first time. The other thing I want to say, and this is where it kind of gets muddy a little bit. Under the old law, if we applied for the PPP, we couldn't apply for the employee retention credit. If we applied for the employee retention credit, we couldn't apply for the PPP. That's all off. That's off the table. It's gone. So now, and what am I saying is because I think it's important that you're going to realize there's a whole bunch of people, there's a bunch of small businesses that went for the employee retention credit under the CARES Act, and now they can literally retroactively go back to March of 2020 and get credits up to, in the past, 50% of the payroll paid on an employee that you retained, and for the first two quarters of next year, up to 70%. But here today, we're going to do that in another video. But here today, what makes this more important is that since March of 2020, we can actually now qualify for a PPP loan and qualify for the ERC. So let's take a look. That's why this, it's it's a whole new population out there. So let's look at it's it's called you got to apply. It's open until March 31st. And there is two potential ways to get the loan. One and two. So let's go to one. Available to first-time qualified borrowers. If you're a qualified first-time borrower, you actually are qualified under the PPP1 set of rules. You're the first time. Who is the first time? Somebody applied for the employee retention credit. Uh, now we're finding out there's a new definition, non-for-profits and churches qualify. So you may be a small business, but your church that you attend, they may qualify for this. So I th that's why I said they've defined a much larger population, and we also can get both the employee credit and the bank loan too. So again, the first time qualified borrower, if you would, and look at, at, at the below where that we have the video we did on the PPP one to qualify for the loan, that rule is still the same as it was in March of 2020. Nothing changed there. But the second area is what we call the businesses that have pre previously received a PPP loan and they're in effect, I'm going to call it the second draw. So we have the first time and we have the second draw. And I kind of like highlighting we got the first time and we've got the second draw. Yep, I can get another loan, but it's a new set of rules. And and those rules, and I'm going to look over here. This law is so new. It's just within a day or two old. So I'm going to look down through. How do I qualify for the second draw? So I'm here, not the first time. Second draw, no more than 300 employees have used or will use the full amount of their first draw PPP loan. And here's the real important. Can show a 25% gross revenue decline in any quarter of 2020 as compared to the same quarter in 2019. Now I'm going to repeat that because that is the hook. That's the catch show a 25% gross revenue decline in any 2020 quarter compared to the same quarter in 2019. I think that's very important. So what this is saying is the first draw was based on 
the prior year. This straw is, and it was just the fact that it was necessary. And on this new application, it's going to ask the same question. Is this necessary to stay in business? So for the first timers up here, they just have to say it was necessary to stay in business and they get the loan down here. It's the second draw and you have to have a decline again of 25%. And there was no test like this in the first draw the PPP one. So with that, what I then want to do is we, we kind of know there's two different groups, but in doing that, what I then want to look at is what's the maximum amount of this loan. How do I qualify? We're just doing it. Two groups. Now let's look at how much can I get? And, and again, this is the law. And what we're going to find out here on this slide, we're going to find out there's going to be more and more in guidance. And as this guidance comes out, I'm going to do videos, videos on this because this is new territory. And, and one of the things you have to look at is that since the first PPP came out, we have almost monthly had new guidance, new changes. And that's the thing. This is with SBA and they're not used to normally dealing with a mass population. And in doing so, they kind of are a little bit behind the game. But Congress in this act that the president signed, they've got, they've got comments in this law that says you got 10 days for guidance, 15 days for guidance, 30 days for guidance. So we're going to be having a lot of guidance. But let's look at what's the maximum that we can qualify for. And so, and I'm going to look here at the page. So maximum loan calculation is the lesser of two and a half times of the average total monthly payroll. And three and a half times of an NAICS 72 companies. It's mainly restaurants and hotels. And so it's that with a max of two million. So again, it's the lesser of two and a half times of our average total monthly payroll. In the case of restaurants and hotels, it's three and a half times capped at 2 million. See the OPPP one was capped at 10 million. So if I'm in that first group we just talked about, I can go back and get up to 10 million because I've never got a loan before because of either I didn't apply for it, didn't qualify for it, and now I do. And again, it's like what we've been doing. It's the payroll cost. Now in another video, we're going to go through payroll costs and covered expenses. But for today, it's two and a half times, capped at $2 million. All right, what are those um, uh, restaurants and hotels? And again, here on this slide, I want to show you it's restaurants, lodging, food services, or similar. Employees eligible by location similar to, look at this. See, and in this second draw, the second um, PPP2 Act, it still keeps referring back to PPP one. So maximum, so eligible employee eligibility, that means it's, we already, and again, we referred to that video, if you'll go back to it, but it's the same employees eligibility by location. It's 300. Actually, if you just want to write that down make a note of it, it's 300 in a given location, maximum loan amount is three and a half times of average monthly payroll, which we just mentioned and affiliation rules do not apply can, uh, do not apply consistent with a PPP one. Okay. With that one, unless you're a large company, you don't worry about that because again, per location is limited to three, 300 people. Now the final thing is then how do we calculate? And again, I, I know I'm kind of wearing it out, but this is the law and you kind of get this experience, but is when they come out and start defining procedures and the forms and how to calculate, we'll be doing that. So ways to calculate, the average monthly payroll calculated for one of these two borrowers can pick. So notice these two way borrowers can pick. So it doesn't matter who's qualifying for the loan, it's here's how you do it. One, one year period before the day the loan is made. Okay, so I kind of quoted the law there, but let's put it over into our world, the, the small business on the street. And that is if I apply, remember when we started, we had the slide of we had to apply prior to March 31st of 2021. What happens is if we apply for the loan in January, it's the, the 
prior 12 months average. If we apply for the loan in February, it's the prior 12 months, which would be what? It would be February 1st to January 31st. If we apply in March, it's going to be the prior 12 months, which is going to be, um, if I can get my calculator going, it's then going to be March 1st through February 28th, unless it's a leap year. So again, it's a sliding 12 months average. You can have that or important or a calendar year 2019 or physical year ending in December of 19. Now here's the interesting note here. <clears throat> Most likely it's probably going to be 19 because this whole thing's based on, you know, revenues being down you know, COVID's hit us now. So you you have the choice of which one you want to pick. It's not the greater than, it's not the less than, it's just you have this choice to pick. So with that, kind of in a recap, number one, who qualifies? It's the second draw. If you're the first timer, your, your, your limit is to the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP1. If you're going back for the second draw, then what's going to happen is going to be the limits. Of, you're still going to be able to get two and a half times, in case restaurants, hotels, three and a half times. But at that point in time, you're going to have to show the reduction in gross receipts. Another little point there is there is no guidance on gross receipts. Stay tuned. In the next two or three weeks, by the act of Congress, we're supposed to get guidance from Treasury on the definition of gross receipts. I can tell you right now, it does not include, so we're the second round and we got a PPP in 2020. You don't include that in your gross receipts for the new loan. And the other thing I probably should kind of recap, see, this is a loan. So it's through your local, your local bank. And so just as we saw in PPP one and the compliance of getting the loan and the documentation, that was all done by the bank. And that leads me into the next point, documentation. Over the last eight or nine months, we've seen we've seen SBA come out with a 3508. You know, we've seen them come out with a 3508EZ. We've seen them come out with a 3508S. And now there's going to be a simplification and it cannot be more than a page. So it looks like, and they got, I think it's 17 or 14 days for having guidance on that from the date of the enactment. So we're going to, for those that are trying to get the original loan forgiven, separate video, we're going to show you how that it's very short, very sweet, up to 150000 But the important thing is where I'm at is documentation. You have to have documentation. you got to comply with the bank's documentation. Now, SBA says if the loan's less than $2 million, there's a different set of rules. But again, you have to work with your bank because this is a loan. This is not IRS. This is a loan with the bank. Round two again. And just real quick, and in separate videos, but real quick, uh, we do have a, uh, a, a tax treatment in the law. We have changes on the EIDL. We've got new qualifications over there. So again, one... We're talking about how to qualify for the loan. We're going to do one on how to get the debt forgiven. And the third one we're going to do on, on the taxability and the deductibility and the accounting. And then we're going to go down and do an economic, you know, the economic injury disaster loan. And there's a whole new qualification. There's $20 billion there that if you haven't applied for that, that's up to $10,000, you may be able to apply for that. So please stay tuned, subscribe, and make sure and click the like button if this helps you. Hope this helps and thank you.